creatives and culture lovers. I'm Maria Bergman, your host and editor-in-chief of Creativity Is. Welcome to our vibrant canvas of news and discovery as we journey through the heart of art, culture, and innovation. Let's find out what's new in the world of film. Having had the privilege of attending the 6th edition of the ECG Film Festival in London from the 24th to the 28th of May 2024, I witnessed firsthand the transformative power of cinema and the boundless creativity of filmmakers from around the world. As I walked into the premier cinema in Rumford, the atmosphere was electric with anticipation for the festival. Film lovers eager to immerse themselves in the realm of cinematic storytelling filled the air with anticipation. The CG Film Festival, now in its sixth year and proudly joining forces with the renowned Rumford Film Festival, has become a renowned platform for Eurasian filmmakers to showcase their talents and connect with audiences worldwide. Over the course of five days, nearly 100 films from 20 to countries grace the screen. From the haunting landscapes of Russia to the vibrant streets of Kazakhstan, each frame transported us to different worlds, igniting our imaginations and challenging our perspectives. The festival culminated in a prestigious awards ceremony celebrating the extraordinary talents of Eurasian filmmakers. The coveted award for Best Eurasian Feature Film went to their and back Russia, directed by Oleg Sajalin. In the Best Eurasian Short Film category, the winner was Happy Independence Day Kazakhstan, directed by the talented Kamila Sajankin. Celebrating excellence in screenwriting, cinematography, and other creative fields, The Godfather Russia won the award for Best Eurasian Screenplay in Russian, while Gazelle Ren won the award for Best Eurasian Cinematography. The festival also honored Valerie Belov, who has made a significant contribution to literature through film, with an award for his work on 3723 Voskresensky Russia. As each award was presented, I couldn't help but feel a deep sense of pride and inspiration. The recipients had poured their hearts and souls into their work, and their artistry had touched our lives in unforgettable ways. The festival also fostered a sense of community among filmmakers, actors, and cinephiles alike. Evenings were filled with lively discussion and hearty laughter. The festival brought together an impressive array of filmmaking talent from Poland, the UK, Italy, Kazakhstan, Russia, Kyrgyzstan, Austria, Uzbekistan, and other countries, including renowned directors and producers such as Paul Brett, Kathy Tyson, Cami Darwish, and Meredith Brett. The presence of distinguished guests, including the mayor of Rumford, Gary O'Sullivan, further underlined the international appeal of the festival and its role as a platform for cultural exchange and creative dialogue. The CG Film Festival reminded me that cinema is not just a form of entertainment, it is a powerful tool for fostering empathy, understanding, and cultural exchange. I left the festival with a renewed appreciation for the boundless creativity of the human spirit. The CG Film Festival had been more than a showcase of cinematic excellence, it had fostered a vibrant community of filmmakers, artists, and enthusiasts, promoting cross-cultural understanding through the universal language of film. To continue the theme, let's talk about the main events of the 77th Annual Can Film Festival, which took place from the 14th to the 25th of May. Led by jury president Greta Gerwig, the festival honored outstanding films from around the world and was a star-studded affair filled with cinematic excellence. The Palme d'Or, the festival's highest honor, went to American filmmaker Sean Baker for his acclaimed comedy-drama Anora. Baker's film impressed the jury with its poignant exploration of the human experience. The Grand Prix, the second highest prize, went to the remarkable Indian film All We Imagine as Light. The film's stunning visuals and profound story left a lasting impression on the jury. Outstanding performances were also recognized, with actresses honored for their roles in Emilio Perez and Kinds of Kindness. Jesse Plemons took home the award for Best Actor for his performance in Kinds of Kindness. Miguel Gomes won the award for Best Director for his film Grand Tour, while Coralie Fargate won the award for Best Screenplay for The Substance. Three honorary Palme d'Or awards were presented during the festival, the first to the legendary Meryl Streep at the opening ceremony, the second to the iconic studio Ghibli and the third to George Lucas at the closing ceremony. 
The Cannes Film Festival once again proved to be a vibrant platform for showcasing the most compelling films and celebrating the artistry of filmmakers from around the world. And for those looking for an inspiring event to visit soon, London's Saatchi Gallery is currently hosting an exhibition showcasing a collection of work by environmentally conscious photographers and filmmakers. The exhibition, entitled Metamorphosis, Innovation in Eco-Photography Film, will run at the Sloan Square Gallery until the 28th of July 2024 and features work by artists Almudina Romero, Ed Carr, Hannah Fletcher and Scott Hunter. The exhibition aims to bridge the gap between art and the environment, emphasizing the fusion of traditional artistic mediums with eco-friendly practices. Historically, photography has been associated with ecological wastefulness due to the use of unsustainable chemicals and the environmental impact of producing and disposing of camera equipment. However, the artists featured in this exhibition have demonstrated innovative and environmentally friendly approaches to their craft. British-Spanish photographer Almudina Romero uses naturally occurring photographic processes such as photoperiodity, photobleaching and photosynthesis to create delicate images printed on resin-coated leaves. Her work offers a poignant juxtaposition of the fragility of nature and human intervention. Ekar, a moving image artist and co-director of Sustainable Darkroom, uses eco-friendly alternatives to photography to produce films that reflect on humanity's relationship with ecological crises and the resulting impact on our planet. Hannah Fletcher, founder and director of Sustainable Darkroom, uses organic and waste materials to create elaborate and unexpected structures, which she then photographs. Her work challenges conventional notions of material value and life cycles by reintegrating waste materials into the creative process. Scott Hunter's practice revolves around experimental photography, scientific processes and ecological research, and aims to challenge traditional attitudes towards landscape photography by using organic materials to process photographs in a non-toxic way. Thus sponsored by Pasqua Wines, an Italian winery, Metamorphosis, innovation in eco-photography film offers a unique opportunity to witness the convergence of art and environmental awareness. Thank you for joining us. Maria Bregman was with you. Until next time, fellow cultural enthusiasts.